If you want to climb to diamond as quickly as possible, these are the seven tips that will get you there. But special thanks to the sponsor of this video, Game Leap. I worked with Game Leap to make a 10 video course filled with VOD reviews and advanced concepts that will help any level of player improve and quickly climb. Plus, it has tons of guides, over 70 from top 500 and grandmaster players. So what are you waiting for? Go check it out right now using code MILLS in the links down below. Now to characterize the ranks underneath the diamond rank, these are the things that you're most likely to find. No core coordination, little set strats or understanding of the game, which means low game sense and also low mechanical skill. Now you also find a mixed bag in players where some have higher mechanical skill, but truly zero understanding and some have quite a bit of understanding, but some of the other aspects of their game are severely lacking. The first thing that I want you to do in order to climb very quickly is abuse a duo partner. Now, when I say abuse, I mean abuse because having a duo partner is such a huge competitive advantage if you incorporate these things with that duo partner. The first thing is find a partner that can synergize with your character. Now, there's two ways to do this. The first type is to have a duo partner that plays a character that is good versus your key weaknesses. Let's say that you're a DPS player and you're really good at Genji, hypothetically, but you can't play hit scan to save your life. And when the enemy team whips out a Fara, you can't do anything. So you duel with someone that can actually play a character that counters what you're incapable of dealing with so that you don't have to rely on a random other DPS player in your games to do it for you and you're never going to actually lose to that far mercy or at least not anywhere near as much. Now while I think that this is a good concept in theory, I think it's better, especially when we talk about the chaotic nature of lower ranks, is to be proactive and come up with a duo synergy that is proactive together. Instead of trying to overcome each other's weaknesses, find a duo that wants to synergize with you and make plays together with you and has the means to do so. Like, let's say you're a Tracer player, for instance, and you have someone that likes to play an aggressive style Lucio, so you and him can go make plays together in the mid fight. Y'all are actually doing whatever y'all are doing solo, but then there's an isolated target. You and that Lucio go on that target together and kill them. Or it's a Zen that discords that target. Or maybe you find an auto main and you're a Genji main. Or maybe you're a Mercy main, so you try to look for players that play Ash or Fara or even Sojourn. You find characters that proactively work together and then you try to utilize your synergy every single game because you're going to bring forth a set amount of value that is going to brute force a ton of wins and really set the pace for the lobby. On top of that, I want you to combo ult as much as possible, assuming that your characters synergize together in the ultimate department. And when I say as much as possible, I'm not talking about doing it once or twice or three times. I'm saying do it as much as you possibly can in a game. Ultimate combos are something that happen very rarely successfully at low ranks. But at the same time, as you climb, they become a staple to how you are winning fights. So I want you to really think about setting these up over and over and over again. Let's take a Zarya Hanzo combo, for instance. A Grav might not get any value. A Dragon Strike might not get any value. But together, you're going to get exponentially more value, especially if you could set it up and play around some of the things that could shut down the combo, like defensive ults. And together, you're getting way more guaranteed value in your games that is going to bring more consistent wins rather than playing for less reliable solo ults that have a higher percentage of failure. Now, of course, you want to find duos that are going to keep your mental up, find people that want the same thing as you to improve, to grind. You never want to be duoing with someone that doesn't really care as much about the game as you or isn't trying to win like you. But if you're looking for some fantastic duo partners, check out the Coach Mills Discord in the links down below. Now, next up, we got to talk about a common problem that happens to every player that has limited time to grind the game. Now, while you're first starting, it's okay to play everything, play every role, play as many characters as possible, because you want to learn as much as you can, generally, about all the characters in the game, all the maps, and everything that all these characters can do. However, if you are someone that can only play 10 hours a week, 20 hours a week, you're not playing a ridiculous amount of time, it's in your best interest to really focus and hone in on as small of a hero group as possible. I've met players who have been stuck in the same rank for a very long time. Let's say for this one person I'm thinking of, they were in gold for a very, very, very long time, many, many seasons straight. And I asked them how much they played a week and they played about 10 to 15 hours a week, but they played a couple hours on Genji, a couple hours on Cassidy. Then they also played a couple hours on Wrecking Ball, a couple hours on Roadhog and, and just like one of a few hours on like five different supports. And it's like, 
you are kind of improving your game sense across the board slightly, and you're kind of improving your mechanical skills slightly, but not quite the same with every character. And if you instead applied those hours on one character, very specifically, you will see exponential progress in that one thing. That is why it's so important that after you break through that intro phase in the game and you decide, I want to improve as much as possible at this character, I want to climb as high as possible with this character, you have to focus in that hero pool as much as you possibly can. One role and a couple of characters that overlap some way fundamentally in their play style or mechanical skill. This is going to allow you to really hone in that focus and really, really improve quickly. Because the reality of the situation is, yeah, you could, you could improve at everything. If you're grinding 60, 80 hours a week, just going ham and you can spend ample time developing your skill across the board, but that's not realistic for the majority of people. And a lot of players are setting themselves up for failure and to feel like they're hard stuck because they're improving at a really, really slow rate. And if you improve at too slow of a rate, the average skill increase from just the average player base is also going up. That's another important thing you need to keep in mind, that if you're improving too slowly, you're not actually matching the constant state of improvement that every rank is going through slowly. Because if we look at, you know, players back in, you know, season one or season two or season three of Overwatch 1, the same plat players back then are actually so much worse than the plat players today. Now, the next problem that happens a lot with players that are trying to get to the diamond rank is they have a problem with consistency. Not only just their games just feel very inconsistent, but their own play feels inconsistent. Sometimes they're popping off and getting crazy amounts of kills, and sometimes they can't hit their shots, and they're not really actually contributing enough value consistently to climb. Now, there's several ways to deal with your consistency problems, but the first thing I want you to do is try to set up the exact same consistent setup for you before you even get into the game. What do I mean by that? If you are someone that's on mouse and keyboard, if you're someone going in your living room, I want you to sit the same distance from the screen. I want you to have the same posture. I want you to build a ritual to do the exact same thing every single time. This happens incredibly often with mouse and keyboard players where some days they feel really, really good and other days they feel like their aim is just off, like it went out the window for no reason. Most of the time, your chair is like pushed back three feet far back from your monitor. You're not quite used to that. Your mouse was not quite perfectly centered when you start and your arm is just a little bit off compared to what you're used to. These are little things, yes, but it can all add up to create a situation where you feel like you're just not in it today. You're not playing like you normally do. Take note also of how your outside influences are affecting your in-game play because that happens incredibly easily if you're worried about something else, if you're thirsty, not hydrated, whatever the case may be. These things can affect your consistency even if you don't notice it. And it doesn't make sense for you to have all this stuff that is affecting your consistency. You're losing all these games. Why are you even grinding so hard if you're going to set yourself up for failure before you even get into the game? Now, this next one might be a little bit controversial, but I promise you this is one of the most tried and true ways to get up to the diamond rank, and that's mechanical skill being a cheat code. Now, the reality of the situation is there are players that come from other games. They have zero game sense and understanding of Overwatch at all, and they come to Overwatch purely with their mechanical skill, and they can climb right up to diamond. Now, do they get stuck in diamond? Most of the time, yes. They can't proceed past that because after that, there's a certain level of mechanical skill that everyone has and you need to understand the game fully before you can advance further than that. But up to the diamond rank, this showcases that you can get there purely with your mechanical skill. You can absolutely carry low rank games with a little bit of game sense and a large or decent amount of mechanics. People in Overwatch generally, even as they climb, haven't put as much time and effort into their mechanics as players from any other FPS. Overwatch players do the least amount of practice, the least amount of aim training, the least amount of server work or practicing your abilities or ultimates in an isolated setting. If you want to truly climb and you don't really want to have to work with your teammates or incorporate advanced strategy or do any of that, your mechanics is the tried and true way to get there. To give you a better example of why this matters, let's say you're really, really cracked at a hit scan, right? And you go and you go make a play. Maybe it's a play that's bad. Like you're 70 or 80 HP and you're going up against two people that have more health than you and they're working together. But because you're mechanically so much better, you still win a bad engagement. Well, on paper, a good player 
player would have made a good engagement, it doesn't matter if you make the right decisions over and over again if your mechanics can't keep up. Now I'm gonna make an entirely separate video for how to quickly improve your mechanical skill. So smash that subscribe button if you don't wanna miss out on that cause it's coming soon and it's gonna help a lot of you. Now another tip I have for you that is pretty Overwatch 2 specific and it's don't throw quote unquote lost fights. This happens incredibly often where you have two people picked off and players will just go for the Hail Mary play. They go balls to the wall and they'll either push out and get killed or they'll trade or they'll just run away chaotically and die and get stabbed. If you and your duo or you and two other people want to back off together and you do your best to play reserved, back off away from the fight and stay with your teammates, stack with them as much as possible and play as tight together as possible, oftentimes enemies will create an opportunity for you to punish an overaggression. This happens incredibly often where, let's say you get two pickoffs, y'all are backing up, backing up, backing up. The enemy want to snowball you, they want to push you down, and so someone will get too aggressive on the enemy team. And this happens more often the lower in rank you go where someone's pushing up, whether it's a DPS or a tank, they'll push up completely by themselves. And because you are intentionally trying to stack with who's ever still alive, y'all can set up a situation where you punish that over-aggression. And it's a lot easier for you to regroup with your team afterwards and win a fight that y'all have an advantage in, or even channel that aggression into another kill, into another kill, and a snowball back to turn these lost team fights. Basically, you're setting up a situation where you give the enemy an opportunity to make a mistake, and you're playing reserved enough to where you're not gonna get punished if enemies push up, while still being ready to punish these enemies if they do push up. Now moving on to number six, and this is one that could even climb you past the diamond rank if you learn to master it, because it requires several moving parts, but I have faith that you could pull this off, and it's making a play on an enemy ultimate combo piece. So we talked about ultimate combos, how they're super strong, and I'm sure that you'll play games where you die to the same ultimate combo over and over again. One of the big ones is like Nanoblade. Oh, he's Nanoblading again, we lose. Oh, he's Nanoblading again, we lose. And it can be very frustrating when you keep playing against the same ultimate combo and you keep losing to the same ultimate combo. But if you can start to track them, and remember if a couple of fights have gone by and the enemy haven't used their ultimates, they probably have it. It's important that you can proactively make a play that will stop an ultimate combo. A great example of this is let's say there's a setup phase before the fight is starting. Your team is approaching the enemy team. You're a character that could be a little bit more proactive, a tank, a DPS, whatever the case may be. And you know that the enemy is prepping that nano blade. Now, depending on your kit, you can try to play to where it's possible for you to shut it down, whether it's with an ultimate of your own, whether it's with a sleep dart, but if you're an aggressive player, you can put a ton of pressure on the enemy Genji so he utilizes his reflect before he sets up and he has to wait for that to come back online. Going in without his reflect means he's a lot more vulnerable. You could put pressure on the Ana, maybe forcing her to panic, killing her outright, disrupting that part of the combo so that maybe she doesn't get the nano off at the right time or on the right person. There's a lot of ways where if you can proactively track some of these or just keep in mind what is available, you can coat an enemy into making a mistake. Just like with the don't throw fights example. Let's say your team has an ultimate combo, put extra pressure on that enemy Lucio as much as possible. Either he is going to get pressured and feel like he has to ult or he's going to not ult and die and and then y'all get to do the ultimate combo so there's a lot of situations where if you're thinking about what your team has as a win condition for a fight and what the enemy has as a win condition or a preventative measure to stop your win condition you can make set plays to disrupt that and that could be a legitimate way that you carry fights not only up to diamond but in masters and in grandmasters as well now last but certainly not least, and this is one of the ones that will help you deny a stagger the best. This is a huge mistake that players make in the low ranks, and it's to push your body to the cart and stop the cart. This is if you are like the last alive, and you know that it's not likely for you to get out. If you're running away trying to regroup with your team and you end up getting killed when you're far, far away, now you're gonna die as your team is regrouping and then they're gonna go in without you most likely and then they're gonna die because they're down a person and then you're gonna respawn and it's like a vicious cycle right and the goal here is to get as many fights as possible especially with you know a payload that is pushing or let's say it's push where push is trying to get the new respawn point if you are last alive your goal is to stop that from moving until you are completely wiped so that you get to respawn with your team 
and the enemy got no percentage while you were still alive. And one of the biggest ways to do this, or the best way to do this, is to force an enemy to kill you. And you might be asking, okay, how do I force them to kill me? You go and you go and intentionally contest. You push yourself straight to the cart. Force it to stop. So if the enemy wanted to push forward, they have to kill you, right? And then, when they kill you, you get to reset with your team as quickly as possible, while still preventing them from getting any free cart movement. But this is not how it plays out most of the time. Most of the time, players are backing up. The entire time, you're running away, even though you're going to get chased down and killed the enemy is actively pushing that cart you die late the enemy got a ton of percentage for free and then your team is going to stagger because you died late it's just a vicious cycle and it's a very very big mistake that players are making and just doing this one alone will win you games but if you combine them with all of these you're going to be absolutely cracked, and I think you can get to Diamond as quickly as possible. But if you need some more help, the Game Leap website has tips, tricks, guides, and everything you need in order to improve your gameplay as quickly as possible. Over 70 guides from Grandmaster and Top 500 players. So if you want to better yourself, use code MILLS in the description down below. And I'll see you next time.